hello guys i am going to start a lecture series on signals and systems so which is very useful subject for both ec and triple e students on an average you are getting a nine marks in gate so you cannot neglect this subject this is a very important subject at the same time this is a very easy subject so in fact it is a score gaining subject okay you cannot neglect this subject for both triple e and ec and my youtube channel is mad in solving so you can subscribe this channel for both ec and triple e guys so for uh, this is exclusively for uh, ec guys uh, triple e guys you can watch for uh, common for common portion between u and ec okay and so i am going to start uh, uh, the subject signals and systems uh, and the syllabus is the basics and the linear time invariant system and continuous time for it series continuous time for it transform uh, laplace transform and j transform discrete time for it transform sampling and dtf dtfs discrete time for it series and dft discrete for it transform okay i will quickly go through all these things so that you will get to our view so uh, for this subject uh, the continuity is needed so every present topic is depends on the previous topic okay so you have to go through the uh, lectures um, on order okay uh, that is the order i gave you here so you also have to go through these lectures on order okay so first this is the basics i will quickly go through all these things so that you will get an you know, overview So the basics. In basics, I will discuss um, basic signals. So which are uh, impulse signals, del of t, u of t, r of t. Classification of signals. Classification of signals and classification of systems. So in basics we will, we will discuss all these things and the next the linear time invariant system so in this part we will discuss the convolution part convolution linear time invariant system okay so this is the continuous time for its series ctfs in short continuous time for your series which is first for your representation i can say so continuous time for your series so i will explore this in very detail so that you will get uh, some insights in this so if you won't understand the continuous time for your series then you will not get anything in continuous time for your transform discrete time for all these things all other uh, for your transforms because ctfs is the basic the fundamental for your representation okay so the uh, the frequency representation starts from the continuous term for your series okay so why we are going uh, to this continuous term for your transform and laplace transform and so on i will discuss all those things so first continuous term for your series which is applicable to only periodic signals why i will discuss applicable to only periodic signals okay and some more constants are there okay but i will discuss and the continuous term for a transform in short ctft which is for both a periodic and periodic but one constraint is there only for absolutely integrable okay and next the laplace transform so 
so which is so the the continuation of Fourier transform only for absolutely integrable signals but a Laplace transform is for both absolutely integrable and non absolutely integrable so here the concept of roc comes for non roc for non uh, absolutely integrable signals here the concept of roc will come i will discuss each and everything so z transform will discuss in short so next uh, discrete time four year series this is discrete time four year series so same uh, this is continuous time four year series for uh, for continuous time signals that too for periodic continuous time signals same discrete time four year series is for discrete time periodic signals for non periodic signals it will not applicable so we will go for discrete time fourier transform so for both discrete time periodic and aperiodic but one constraint is there for this one constraint is there only for absolutely summable only for absolutely summable okay that is the constraint for a discrete term Fourier transform same as continuous term Fourier transform so the same as continuous term Fourier transform only for absolutely integrable so because these are continuous term signals we have to integrate them okay so for, but for discrete time signals we have to sum you cannot integrate the discrete time signal so they should be only absolutely summable signals otherwise discrete time transform will not exist so what we what can we do we can go for here to z transform so this is for both absolutely summable and non absolutely summable both okay absolutely summable and absolutely non summable signals z transform same as laplace transform for continuous time signals what a laplace transform will do the same thing a z transform will do for uh, discrete time signals okay so we'll discuss all these things in detail but i'm giving a brief view that's it okay uh, after this a sampling this is the concept of uh, uh, converting a continuous time signal to a discrete time signal so here we will discuss an important theory which is the an important theory which is the relation between continuous time Fourier transform and a discrete time Fourier transform very important uh, I will discuss that thing in sampling okay and after all these things I will discuss DFT okay and FFT is not a transform it is not a Fourier transform it is an algorithm okay it is a program so it is an algorithm to, to um, for DFT to compute efficiently okay if I represent this DFT in the form of FFT uh, here you need to solve very less number of computations than for DFT okay so the computations are significantly decreased by FFT algorithm okay this is an algorithm not a Fourier transform BFT is the Fourier transform okay and after all discussing all these things so you have to work with in practice you have to work with the DFT only okay why I will discuss why the question is why I will discuss all those things okay so in practice you have to work with DFT when you go to the industry so if you were if your wing is a communication wing or signal processing wing then you have to work with the DFT only okay 
uh, all these things will not be will not be useful at all in your life okay why i will discuss so i am going to start the basic part of signals and systems so the continuity is important for this subject because if you miss anything in the uh, lecture uh, you cannot follow the next lecture okay so that's why uh, at the same time you have to follow the lectures in order whatever the order i gave you uh, in that order you have to follow so first i am going to start the topic basics okay so in that in basics so some basic signals we'll discuss in detail each and every basic signal which is very important so sometimes some some kind of mistakes are going on in teaching at the same time in understanding okay so i will discuss all those things also so the basics basic signals first my first signal is impulse signal what is impulse signal i will represent this impulse signal with the del of t okay so graphically first i will represent graphically zero this is the representation of del of t so what is del of t your del of t equal to zero or uh, first i will represent infinity at t equal to zero and this is zero for t not equal to zero at t equal to zero the amplitude of del of t is infinity this is amplitude amplitude is infinity this is the amplitude so this amplitude part is infinity at t not equal to zero it is zero and this is not sufficient to represent this simple signal because at t equal to zero you have the value infinity which is no information you cannot get anything information from infinity okay so because you don't know infinity that is not the information and at t not equal to zero we have zero zero is not information okay so and one more definition is needed to represent this del of t that is this integral minus infinity to plus infinity del of t dt equal to 1 which means so area under the curve minus infinity plus infinity del of t dt means integrating this signal over minus infinity plus infinity so then this is the area of del of t so area of del of t must be 1 so this entire thing is the definition this entire thing is the definition not just this one not del of t equal infinity t equal 0 0 t not equal 0 okay in options if if they give you a question of the del of t representation so in options which contains all these three things will be the correct answer only these two things will be there del of t equal to 0 infinity del of t equal to 0 t not equal to 0 t equal to 0 infinity if these two are there this is not the perfect definition okay these three things will be there okay and next my next sig uh, impulse signal okay i will discuss here itself the entire um, uh, the concept of in impulse signals how to how to generate all these things practically 
so you cannot generate the impulse signal practically because at t equal to zero you have to generate infinite strength signal so that, that is practically impossible so how can you generate the impulse signal so i will generate the impulse signal with a rectangular pulse so first uh, impulse generation from rectangular pulse I will take a rectangular pulse like this initially like this suppose suppose minus 8 plus 8 okay so what is the amplitude I need to put because I want the area of the signal must be 1 because that is the uh, one of the constraint for impulse signal okay area must be 1 so what I have to put here amplitude because this is 16 this uh, uh, this length is 16 so this mm, the breadth should be 1 by 16 okay then I will get area 1 so what I have to do this is the time axis so in the time domain this length 82 minus 82 plus 8 length should be decreased so that you will get this that width 0 until you will get 0 that width should be decreased so what I have to do first I will decrease this up to minus 4 to plus 4 then what you get minus 4 to plus 4 is a, a width of 8 so amplitude you have to get 1 by 8 which is greater than 1 by 16 this 1 by 8 next I will decrease up to minus 2 to plus 2 which is 1 by 4 1 by 4 is greater than 1 by 8 next I will decrease this width to minus 1 to plus 1 minus 1 to plus 1 the width is 1 by 2 which is greater than 1 by 4 and similarly I will decrease let us say minus 1 by 2 to plus 1 by 2 this width is 1 and it increases to 1 and so on I will discuss uh, I will decrease I will disk uh, and so on I will decrease to 0 so we very near to 0 okay then you will get this length approximately infinity this length approximately infinity this width approximately 0 okay so this is the practical signal so practical impulse signal okay so you not only generate uh, this uh, impulse signal from this uh, rectangular pulse can also generate from a triangular pulse this is the triangular pulse so suppose minus 2 2 plus 2 uh, you want keep this area 1 of bh so of base is 4 and h you want and area should be 1 so h equal to 1 by 2 this is 1 by 2 similarly you decrease this width I'll decrease this width minus 1 to plus 1 then you will get 1 and so on I will decrease this width up to 0 then you will get 0 this will get infinity so this is impulse practically generated impulse okay you can also generate this uh, impulse signal from triangular pulse and also you can generate from a, a sync pulse I will discuss it this sync pulse later okay
so i discussed the impulse signal and the next one is step signal let's say unit step signal and the properties of the impulse signal i will discuss later i quickly go through the basic signals first and then i will come back to unit impulse signal because there is a lot to do with impulse signal okay throughout the subject it will be it will be coming so in fact this impulse sig signal uh, will be hunting in your entire life if you are a, an ec student so if you go to uh, do mtech in iits or something somewhere else or wherever you are there if you are in study mode you will get this impulse signal everywhere okay so i will discuss the properties all those things i will discuss later the simple signal so quickly go through this basic signals first so u of t so i will represent u of t graphically like this this is u of t this value is one okay so u of t equal to 1 for t greater than 0 and that equal to 0 for t less than 0 and at exactly 0 undefined at t equal to 0 because at exactly 0 it takes 0 to 1 in between 0 to 1 you have infinite values okay so we don't know what we have to take but this is one way of definition but at exactly t equal to 0 you can take an average value so uh, for mathematics guys we will not accept this 1 by 2 okay and for us it is um, uh, it will not affect the things in our signals and systems so at t equal to 0 at exactly particular value of t equal to 0 it is not useful at all at exactly particular time okay we are not interested in signals and systems at a particular value of time okay so in throughout signals and systems we are not interested at a particular value of time at a t equal to 0 at t equal to 2 at t equal to 3 so we are not interested in that okay so you can ignore at t equal to 0 or if you want to take at t equal to 0 you can take average value between 0 and 1 that is 1 by 2 so you can define that also so at t equal to u of t equal to 1 so u of t equal to 1 for t greater than 0 and equal to 0 for t less than 0 and equal to 1 by 2 at t equal to 0 is also possible value of definition this is also correct because we are not interested in t equal to 0 okay you can take a t equal to 0 is average of 0 and 1 or one more definition also possible so u of t equal to 1 for t greater than or equal to 0 at t equal to 0 you can take 0 1 also and 0 for t less than 0 see all these definitions are correct okay because we are not interested at a particular value of t equal to 0 through our signals and systems and we are not interested at particular value t equal to 0 okay next Next third signal ramp ramp signal I'll represent this with R of T. First I will represent in graphically this is T. This is R of T, just like this. Okay.
this is r of t the slope is 1 slope of this line is 1 so i will represent slopes like this on the line i will represent the slope and i will round off that slope okay if i represent like this it is a slope of this say uh, this length uh, this straight line okay so what is that r of t equal to r of t equal to t y equal to mx t for t greater than or equal to 0 and equal to 0 for t less than 0 this is the straight line passing through the origin so now to represent y equal to mx m is the slope 1 slope 1 into x axis is t m into t so this is the representation of r of t okay you also can represent r of t equal to so if you don't want to specify this limits you can represent t into u of t why u of t represents positive side of the signal why u of t is 1 for t greater than 0 if t greater than 0 you have to multiply this with 1 into t for t less than 0 you have to multiply with this t with 0 for t less than 0 okay 0 into t you will get 0 so i will represent r of t with t into u of t okay next the relation between these three u of t relation between del of t u of t and r of t because r of t equal to t into u of t so if i differentiate r of t d by dt of r of t if you differentiate this t you will get one for t greater than or equal to zero and equal to zero for t less than zero right because t into u of t means t for t greater than or equal to zero zero for t less than zero so i will differentiate this r of t by dt dr of t by dt that equal to so for t greater than zero it is t so I differentiate this for t greater than zero you will get one and equal to zero for t less than zero if we differentiate this r of t for t less than zero you will get zero this is the representation so how to represent this d by dt of r of t equal to so this is exactly equal to u of t correct or not for t greater than 0 you are getting 1 for t less than 0 you are getting 0 so d by dt of r of t equal to u of t that's it similarly d by dt of u of t you will get del of t okay so why why because this is t this is u of t i want to differentiate this so d by dt of u of t so for t less than zero you have zero for t less than 0 you have 0 so uh, if you differentiate with uh, g, 0 with t you will get uh, 0 and for t greater than 0 you have constant for t greater than 0 so if you differentiate a constant with respect to t you will get 0 so here also 0 for t greater than 0 but at exactly t equal to 0 you have a, a jump okay so but if you differentiate at t equal to 0 then here you will get a bump that is at t equal to 0 you have infinite variation a sudden discontinuity is there thus those sudden discontinuities are represented with impulses okay this is the impulse 
so whenever you differentiate a sudden discontinuities you will get impulses okay why impulse so you are differentiating means you will get the slope of that signals okay suppose y equal to mx plus c if i differentiate with dy by dx what you get m slope of this line you are getting m okay so this also a vertical straight line okay a vertical straight line has infinite slope okay if you differentiate this with respect to t you have to represent this a uh, slope that slope is actually infinity here here d by dt of v of t is infinity how to represent infinity at t equal to 0 you have to represent this with del of t this is del of t this is at t equal to 0 so how can I represent this this whole thing del of t only okay So that is the relationship between them. So d by dt of r of t equal to u of t. From this integral of minus infinity to two t u of t dt equal to r of t. And d by dt of u of t equal to del of t. From this integral minus infinity to root t del of t dt equal to u of t and d square by dt square of r of t you will get del of t so first to differentiate r of t with respect to t d by dt of r of t you will get u of t and again differentiate two times you will get del of t okay that is the relationship between these basic signals and these are important also okay and i will discuss this differentiation property graphically also again so if i have a signal like this like this let us say some x of t this is t okay this is a signal i want represent d by dt of x of t okay so how to represent d by dt of x of t so suppose this is one two three four by 6 so up to 0 this is 1 this is 2 3 4 by 6 t up to 0 to 1 you have a constant this is 1 0 to 1 at t exactly t equal to 0 you, you don't know the value okay this is the signal going and this is like this and this is the signal going and this is constant for some time and this is coming back discontinuity and this is going to some one discontinuity this is discontinuity this is discontinuity and constant okay this is how the signal is okay like this guys so 0 to 1 in between what is d by dt because it is a constant 0 to 1 you will get 0 0 to 1 it is a 0 1 to 2 anyway you have 0 you would differentiate 0 you will get 0 2 to 3 also 0 because constant if you differentiate uh, this a constant signal with respect to time you will get 0 so all these things are zeros okay but at discontinuities at exactly t equal to 0 you have a discontinuity okay 
set x0 t equal to 0 you have discontinuity you will represent with impulse signal okay but at t equal to 1 you have decreasing decreasing function that is also discontinuity so you have to represent with negative impulse at t equal to 2 positive impulse at t equal to 3 negative impulse t equal to 4 positive impulse t equal to 5 negative this is first over t less than uh, t greater than 6 you have constant so constant if you differentiate constant 0 okay so this is so you have to do d by dt of x of t whenever you have discontinuities if you differentiate the signal you will get impulses okay this is very important concept and we will use this uh, we will keep use this in Fourier series uh, uh, in Fourier series yes. and, and, and uh, so many times I will use these things okay whenever I feel difficulty in finding the Fourier series coefficients I will use this property okay in coming lectures I will discuss at that time also no need to worry okay next so i discussed uh, mm -hmm. continuous time signals actually there are continuous time signals and i will discuss some uh, discrete time signals also so that is impulse signal discrete discrete time impulse signal so but in discrete term you have to represent the signal exactly so their values should be determinate so there should not be infinity because the discrete time signals are invented to store these values in the computer okay so computer cannot store infinity okay so uh, in discrete time signal you have to define a signal which is which can be uh, that value can be stored in the computer so what I have to do so I will represent this this is the sample value the sample value is 1 so this is del of n so I will represent del of n equal to 1 at n equal to 0 and a 0 for n not equal to 0 okay this is sufficient okay this is sufficient uh, this is the sufficient definition for unit impulse signal in discrete term. and you can also sum n equal to minus infinity plus infinity del of n what you get so n is integer this is the axis n n is integer so only at n equal to 0 signal exists exist all other 0 1 2 3 4 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so in all the cases you have zeros so only at n equal to 0 that to del of n value at n equal to 0 is 1 that is all other cases zeros plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 so this also uh, exists but it is not mandatory in man definition so this is sufficient okay yeah. mean discrete time signals okay but in continuous time case you have to uh, um, uh, include uh, uh, the area property in the definition otherwise there is no meaning at all because at t equal to 0 you have infinity at that time so at t equal to 0 you have infinity that is not an information at all okay but at n equal to 0 you have 1 that is uh, information 1 is an information it is not infinite it is not 0 so 1 can be stored in a computer so discrete time signals are invented so to store these values in the computer okay yes next
u of n unit input unit step signal then discrete time how to represent this 0 1 2 3 4 5 minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 and so on and so on this is axis is n okay so you have values that are 1 at all positive values of n and 0 at all negative values of n but here at n equal to 0 you have defined particular value 1 at n equal to 1 1 1 all are ones okay so there at u of t at t equal to exactly 0 you cannot define because that is a, a discontinuity but here at, a, at n equal to 0 we have a perfect value that is 1 okay so we are exactly defined 1 okay so u of n equal to 1 for n greater than or equal to 0 and equal to 0 for n less than 0 okay this is the perfect definition okay next r of n So next R of n, which is unit ramp, discrete time. So I will represent graphically. This axis is n. This is n. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, minus one minus 2 minus 3 and so on so this axis n and this takes in integer values 1 2 3 4 5 and 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 and all those non-integer values are meaningless enter because we have to store these values in the computer okay computer cannot store the 0 0.5 0 0.6 0 0.7 this um, is non integer values because uh, suppose one represents one memory location in the computer two represents second memory location three represents third memory location what is the meaning of 0.5 memory location absolutely no sense at all okay so uh, in discrete time means um, they should be integers okay okay how to represent take exactly n equal to 0 value is 0 this is 1 at n equal to 2 at n equal to 3 3 at n equal to 4 4 and so on linearly increasing signal so r of n equal to n for n 
greater than or equal to 0. At n equal to 0, what is the value? n equal to 0, you have to substitute uh, 0 in place of n, 0 only. Okay. And 0 for n less than 0. This is R of n, the definition of R of n. And here also I can represent, I can uh, represent a relation. You can represent a relation between u of n, del of n, r of n, I can and derive a relation. So I will represent them graphically so that you can understand easily. This is n, this is del of n. This is u of n. This is R of n. Del of n is at exactly n equal 0, 1. Remaining all cases, zeros. At n equal to 0, this is 1. All cases, 1. 1, 2, 3, and so on. The negative values of n, you have 0. But this, at exactly 0, 1. At exactly 0, 0, to 1, 1. At two, we have two. At three, we have three. So to four, we have four. Linearly increasing R of n. So I can represent the relation. So clearly, you can see from u of n, u of n to del of n. So u of n equal to u of n can be written as del of n. This is this is del of n. This is del of n. And I'm just shifting this del of n to unit center. What one unit center? Del of n minus. I will I will discuss these shifting things. So you can just shifting this by del of n minus. And del of n minus two plus del of n minus two. So, the shifting with all these things, the, uh, the operation and the signals. I will discuss the shifting. Okay. I will just derive a relation here and then I will discuss each and everything. So, uh, how to represent these things? Del of n plus del of n minus 1, del of n minus 2, del of n minus all those things. So, sigma n or I will take k. Sigma k and del of n minus k where k equal to 0 to infinity u of n. This is k. k equal to 0 to infinity. This can be represented in this. Okay. Next. What is this? You can remember. And what is del of n from u of n? Del of n is u of n minus u of n minus 1. This is u of n. You want to shift one unit by right. u of n minus 1 means u of n minus 1. I will write here. This is u of n minus 1. Here you have 0. Here you have 1, 2, 3, and so on. So you want to subtract this u of n, uh, this u of n minus 1 from u of n. This is u of n minus 1. To subtract uh, u, of, uh, u of n minus 1 from u of n, you will get only at n equal to 0 sample. So that is del of n. That is del of n. Okay. Similarly, r of n to u of n.
so rf in how to represent rf in one two three four rf in and i will represent rf in minus one R of n minus 1 means 1 unit sample shifted by right side. We will discuss that. Don't worry at this time. So n minus 1 means this entire signal shifted by right side by 1 unit. So, so this, this is 1, 2, 3, 4. Anyway, here values are 0. At exactly 1, you have 0. At 2, you have 1. At 3, you have 2. At 4, you have 3. So, at 5 here, you have 5. Uh, but at 5, you have 4. And so on. You subtract R of n minus R of n minus 1, what do you get? So, from R of n, uh, R of n to R of n minus 1 subtracted. You will get 0 here. At exactly 1, you will get 1. At exactly 2, you will get 2 minus 1, 1. At exactly 3, you will get 3 minus 2, 1. Similarly, all are 1s. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But this, t, this is not U of n. Because at exactly 0, you don't have a sample. So it is missing. So I would just, I would write R of n minus R of n minus 1 is not a U of n. So if we add one sample at a del of one sample at a t n equal to 0, that is del of n, then you will get U of n. Here R of n minus R of n minus 1, you don't have any sample at n equal to 0. So if you have n equal to 0 a sample, then that entire sample you can represent as u of n. But you don't have a sample. So I will add uh, a del of n to this signal. That is at n equal to 0, I am adding 1. So if I add this, then it will, be, it will become u of n. So that is what I have written here. Okay. So all these are you know, some kind of uh, representations and relations between u of n and del of n, r of n and u of n, all these things. Okay. Next, I will discuss some more signals. Those are very important signal in in fact in your communication and communications and and signals and systems also. And most of the questions are coming from those signals. So please be concentrated on uh, remaining signals, uh, which are I'm going to discuss right now. Continuous time signals again, I'm coming. Uh, in that, First one is rectangular pulse. Important, very important signal in communication and both in communication and signals and systems. Okay, so I'll represent this. I'll represent this rectangular of T by capital T. R, I will represent this gated signal G T of T. This suffix is T, so the suffix represent the pulse width that is minus T by 2 to plus T by 2. Okay, suppose 1. So, rect of T by T means that equal to g t of t that equal to 1 per minus t by 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to t by 2 and 0 per 
otherwise but t less than minus t by 2 and t greater than t by 2 you have zeros and all these cases okay and equal to 0 otherwise and in between minus t by 2 plus t by 2 you have 1 this is the definition okay so from this how can we identify uh, this rectangular of t suppose if i write a rectangular of t by 2 how to represent this i'll represent this this pulse width is 2 so this is minus 1 to plus 1 this one okay next not only that suppose some a times rectangular of t by t how to represent this just t represents minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 that is pulse width is t and this amplitude is a okay this over rectangular t by t and also this limits so i discuss this limits also rectangular t by t equal to 1 for minus t by 2 less than or equal to t less than or equal to t by 2 right and this limits also can be written as magnitude of t less than or equal to t by 2 and equal to zero otherwise this otherwise thing also can be written as mod t greater than and equal to t by 2 to work out on this hmm? because mod t equal to plus t for t greater than and equal to zero and minus t for t less than zero from this i have written these things to work out on this next triangular else this also very important so most of the questions in the uh, continuous term Fourier transform you are getting on these signals only rectangular and triangular so you have to concentrate more on these these signals So this is minus t2 plus t. So the width is 2t. So I will represent this triangular tri. This pulse width is t triangular 2t of t. Okay. So triangular 2t of t. If I represent this triangular 2t of t, this 2t is the pulse width. This is the pulse width 2t. That equal to how to represent these things. So here the value is 1 amplitude. So what is the slope here? This is for t less than 0. This is t less than 0. The slope is 1 by t. Y axis length 1, x axis length t. So slope, if this is increasing signal, slope positive slope 1 by t. And for t greater than 0, this, this is another line. This is this slope is minus one by t. Okay, so triangle two t of t. How to represent them? First t less than zero. I'll represent. For t less than zero. For t less than zero, you have. So this is y equal to mx plus c. This line is straight line, so you have mx plus c. This is the straight line for t less than 0 y equal to mx plus c how to represent m into x t plus c so what is the c value how to get so at t equal to 0 what is the value at t equal to 0 you have value 1 so i will substitute t equal to 0 triangular 2 tf remember i am uh, i am 
writing this equation for t less than 0 so t equal to 0 you have m into 0 plus c but at 3 at t equal to 0 triangular 2t of 0 is 1 so this is 0 plus c c equal to 1 so triangular 2t of t equal to substitute c in the slope m equal to 1 by t 1 by t into t plus 1 for t less than 0 and for t greater than 0 what is that so triangular 2t of t equal to y equal to mx plus c m is minus 1 by t x is t plus c what is the c value same exactly t equal to 0 what is the value 1 triangular 2t of 0 equal to minus 1 by t into 0 plus c that equal to c what is the value 1 so c value is 1 substitute c value in this equation so what you get i'm writing here triangular 2t of t equal to minus 1 by t into t plus 1 so what i got so i will again draw again minus t plus t this is t triangular 2t of t so this is triangular 2t of t that equal to 1 plus t by capital t for t less than 0 and that equal to 1 minus t by capital t for t greater than 0 you can substitute less than equal to also because at exactly 0 you will get 1 substitute in both equation you get 1 only so both are satisfied so this is the definition but i can also represent this like triangular sorry triangular 2t of t equal to 1 minus mod t by t so without specifying the limits because what this mod t is this mod t is plus t for t greater than 0 and equal to minus t for t less than 0 so you can substitute these things in place of mod t for t greater than 0 you have plus t so from this you will get this equation for t greater than 0 1 minus t by t for t less than 0 minus t mod t is so substitute minus t in mod t then you will get minus of minus plus 1 plus t by t you will get 1 plus t by t for t less than that's how i written so whenever you see this equation 1 minus mod t by t like this this is the triangular signal okay so what if my amplitude is not 1 here my case is 1 what if my amplitude is not 1 how will be the equation that also important so triangular 2t of t let us say this is a this is minus t plus t so how to represent this triangular 2t of t is just a multiply throughout the equation a into 1 minus mod t by t why so at t equal to 0 you have value 1 if you have value a so substitute t equal to 0 here then you will get a okay you have to multiply a throughout the equation okay so whenever you see this equation you don't know whether it is triangular or whatever the signal you don't know but whenever you see this equation you have to know that this is a triangular signal 1 minus mod t by 2 if you see the signal from this signal you can represent this this is minus t plus t this is a that's it okay that is important from this signal you have to you have to understand this is the triangular pulse this is the triangle signal okay so these two pulses what what are the pulses i discussed 
the rectangular and triangular pulses are very very important so when i discuss your fourier transform of these two signals i will explore more in detail all this, this, uh, these two signals so but remember <laughs> these two signals are important next one more signal 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 function it's also one of the important signal useful signal so I will represent the signal graphically this is T For t greater than 0, 1, for t less than 0, you have minus 1. So, this is signum of t. So, signum of t equal to plus 1 for t greater than 0, equal to minus 1 for t less than 0. At exactly 0, you can say 0, average value 0. Okay. Exactly 0, t equal to 0. But we are not interested at all at exactly t equal to 0 okay we are interested in signals and systems at t greater than 0 or t less than 0 we are not interested at a particular value of time and throughout the signals okay and practically as we are an electronics engineer we are not at all interested in the values at a particular points because the probabilities at a particular point is 0 so when i discuss the probability and random processes in communications i will discuss all these things at a particular point of time your probability of the signal is zero okay your probability of a random signal at a particular point is zero so we are not interested in at a particular points whereas we are an electronics engineer this is the signal of t and one more signal Sampling. Sampling function. We usually represent sa of t. So S A sa of t equal to sine t by t. Or sa of some constant k t equal to sine k t by k t. Okay whatever the value present in brackets that should be in the denominator sin kt by kt okay you know how to represent sin t okay you know how to represent sin kt so we have to represent sa of kt okay so how to represent graphically so you know sin t okay sin t sin t can be represented as this sin t t equal to 0 t equal to pi t equal to 2 pi t equal to 3 pi and so on and this maximum value is 1 this minimum value is minus 1 because sin t equal to 0 at t equal to n pi here n equal to 0 1 2 3 and so on so at equal to 0 at equal to pi 2 pi 3 pi 4 pi at all these cases you have sin t equal to 0 so these are 0 crossovers of sin t all these cases 0 minus t minus 3 minus n equal to 0 plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 plus r minus 3 all these cases we have zeros sin t what is sin t by t so sa of t equal to sin t by t and for this also zero crossover same because sin t by t equal to zero then sin t equal to zero then at a t equal to plus or minus n pi only you will get zeros so for sin t by t also we have zero crossovers same 
so whatever the zero crossovers so wherever zero occurs in time wherever zero occurs in time okay uh, for sign t so they uh, at that instance only for sa of t uh, zero occurs okay so how to represent sin t by t so for a t equal to 0 what is the value at exactly t equal to 0 you will get at t equal to 0 0 by 0 form sin 0 sin 0 0 t equal to 0 0 so what you have to do elaspital rule so limit t tends to 0 sin t by t you will get cos t by 1 limit t tends to 0 it is 1 and exactly t equal to 0 you have value 1 so at a t equal to plus or minus n pi n equal to 0 1 2 3 and so on in all these cases you have the value is 0 but at a t equal to 0 exactly you will have maximum value 1 okay so how to represent this this is of t so at exactly t equal to 0 you have value 1 but as t increases as t increases uh, sin t by t value should be decreases because the denominator you have t so this is like a sign cell signal only but this magnitude is decreases slowly um, t equal to infinity you will get 0 so this is the signal and you have to represent these crossovers that is the important thing so the t equal to pi t equal to 2 pi t equal to 3 pi t equal to 4 pi wherever sign has a 0 crossovers sign sa of t also have same cross 0 crossovers pi pi and so on this is minus pi minus 2 pi minus 3 pi minus 4 pi and so on this is 0 but at exactly t equal to 0 you have 1 this is very very important signal for an electronic student for electronics and communication student okay sampling signal so when I discuss a continuous transfer return so I will discuss this sampling signal again and one more signal is there same same like sampling signal sync signal so this is sync t so what is sync t sync t equal to sine pi t by pi t okay so inside a bracket there is no pi but in representing the elementary signals that is a sign sign signal is elementary signal so in representing the elementary form so this is sin pi t by pi t so where this uh, where this signal has zero crossover sin pi t by pi t so sin pi t by pi t equal to zero make zero where the signal is zero so from this sin pi t equal to zero from this when this becomes zero pi t equal to n pi plus or minus n pi so t equal to plus or minus n so the t equal to plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3 and so on but what is the value at t equal to 0 substitute similarly at t equal to 0 sin pi t by pi t sin pi t by pi t you will get 0 by 0 this is undefined form so same Similar, similarly t tends to 0 sin pi t by pi t we are getting 0 by 0 form so limit t tends to 0 so differentiate 
pi cos pi t by pi that is 1 so at t equal to 0 you have 1 sin pi sinc t has t equal to 0 you have value 1 and it has 0 crossover set plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 plus r minus 3 but in case of sampling function so of t we have 0 crossover set plus r minus pi plus r minus 2 pi plus r minus 3 pi and so on and at plus r minus n pi you have a 0 crossovers for saw function for sync function at plus r minus n that is plus r minus 1 plus r minus 2 and so on you have 0 crossovers so i want to represent this in a graphically so graphically sync it sync t but exactly 0 you have value 1 because of in denominator t is there because of that the uh, amplitude gets decreased as t increases and so on and so on t equal to 0 your value is 1 but t equal to 1 at t equal to 2 you have 0 crossovers t equal to 3 t equal to 4 t equal to 5 t equal to minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 and so on okay this is sync t and what is the relation between uh, sync t and soft t okay sa of t equal to sin t by t right but sinc t equal to sin pi t by pi t so i will write this as sinc sin pi t by pi t sa of pi t okay sa of pi t what how can you write sa of pi t sin of whatever the uh, value present in the bracket that sin pi t by whatever the value present in the bracket that is sin pi t so you can represent sinc t in terms of sa of t so sa of pi t sinc t equals sa of pi t this is also important one of the useful result so sometimes the exam you might get sa of t sometimes you might get sinc t okay you must know the relation so these are the basic signals that I can discuss uh, uh, for now and some more signals are there but those signals I will discuss when I discuss uh, a continuous temporal transform because those signals are just um, exponential signals e power minus t e power minus a t u of t e power plus a t u of t and in terms of discrete time signals a power n u of n a power minus n u of n all those things i will discuss them when i discuss your laplace transform and their jet transform and your continuous time Fourier transform discrete time Fourier transform all the, in, when i discuss all these things i will discuss some more signals but these are the signals uh, we must need to proceed okay so anyway I'm stopping this lecture now so I discussed uh, your, um, the first part in the basics and the second part is the classification the classification of signals and the classification of systems okay yeah anyway I am going to stop <laughs>